Hi everyone, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Hyperledger Fabric within the Settlement BPass platform. Before we do that, let's first talk a bit about where Hyperledger comes from and how specifically Hyperledger Fabric works architecturally. So the Hyperledger uh, project is an umbrella project that's completely open source that was started by the Linux Foundation and has received uh, plenty of funding from different types of companies, including IBM in the past. Um, it includes a wider range of different frameworks that you can see here in its umbrella, uh, as well as many different tools. And with the Hyperledger uh, sort of framework of different frameworks and tools, you can combine uh, frameworks and tools together in different ways to fit your specific use case. We are going to focus specifically on Hyperledger Fabric. Um, and let's talk a bit about what makes Hyperledger Fabric unique as a permissioned blockchain for enterprises. So Hyperledger Fabric, um, just like any other blockchain, has peers, and those peers contain a copy of the ledger, and they run a thing called chain code, which is kind of like smart contracts. What's unique about it is that they also include a channel. So channels are what connects different peers together so that they can communicate with one another. If a peer is not connected to another peer through a channel, then it does not communicate with that peer. Um, and then this channel makes up kind of what is uh, the application that all of these peers are a part of. Um, and so we can increase the complexity a bit. Um, organizations can have many peers uh, within the distributed ledger. Uh, and these peers are sending information back and forth between one another. Only the peers that are connected via the channel are the ones that are communicating with each other. So a channel doesn't have to connect all of the peers of every organization together. One organization can have many peers for different purposes in which maybe some of the peers are for one application using one channel and other peers are using for another application using another channel. But we can see here that these, that these four organizations are uh, communicating with each other in five different nodes. Yellow has two of them connected to the channel. Um, and organizations can own more than one, more than two, even more than three nodes. Um, and all of the nodes that are not connected via the channel are not communicating with one another. And so what makes Hyperledger quite unique is that you can have what are called certificate authorities. Certificate authorities are the entities that grant permission to peers and organizations in order to join a specific channel or application. So you can see here that we have a certificate authority um, that works with another certificate authority as well. Um, they have a specific policy for adding peers or organizations to the network. Each peer here as well, you can see has its own identity. Um, so a peer will be identified in some specific way. We can see that peer one is perhaps identified identified as being one that should be included in this channel is connected to peer four, which is in organization two. So you can see there's kind of like this overlaying a uh, hierarchy that you can customize in order to have uh, very specific use cases for maybe your business application. Um, and if we continue a bit more, what also adds a little bit more complexity is that with Hyperledger Fabric, you can have different types of nodes. So you have peer nodes in which they contain copies of the ledger and they are adding blocks to their blockchain, as well as requesting transactions be created to the channel. But also in between that, we also have the ordering peers. So orderers are the ones who specifically have the duty of ordering the transaction and bundling the transactions together. So peers make requests through the channel, going to the orderer, the orderer bundles all of them up and sends them back out. So that way we have a kind of neutral party that orders and bundles transactions together. Um, and this is all happening through the same channel. Um, so plenty of projects have already begun creating use cases with Hyperledger Fabric. Here is just uh, some of the companies. There is a very large list if you go to the Hyperledger Fabric website, but includes big companies like GE, IBM, uh, and so forth. So uh, Hyperledger Fabric, as you can tell, has a lot of customizability, which makes it quite unique as a value proposition for enterprises that are looking to build applications using distributed ledger technologies. But now let's take a look at how we do that concretely in the settlement BPAS platform. All right, so to begin 
a Hyperledger Fabric blockchain network. We are here on the dashboard of the Settlement BPass platform. We're going to go to here blockchain networks and we want to spin one up. Well, how we do that is go up here in the top right corner, add a blockchain network. We'll have the uh, many choices that we have on the platform. We're going to click here, Hyperledger Fabric. We're going to confirm that. We'll give it a name, say it's Fabric, and uh, as well as a name for a node. So our network needs minimum one order node to be operational. So this is, our, we're already going to deploy a node, and this is the order. So this is um, the one that, as you saw previously, is the one that creates the bundling of the different transactions of the peer nodes. So just going to say order. Uh, we can select the endorsement policy. So we can say specifically on the application channel, uh, which uh, peers or the amount of peers, whether it needs a majority or not, um, are needed for the orderer to endorse a transaction to be valid. So we can say it's by all of the peers or it's by a majority of the peers. Um, we can determine how much consensus is required to move forth uh, in agreeing on the a consensus for the transactions that are being created in the network. So we're going to put majority of peers, let's say, uh, we're going to use, or we're going to pick our deployment plan. Let's say we want shared, um, and we're going to use Google Cloud, and then we pick our region. Closest one to me is Brussels, so I'll click Brussels, and our resource pack. Um, then we can, if we want, even configure even more settings. We can have the batch timeout. Absolute max bytes in batch, preferred max bytes in batch, max messages in batch. So there's a lot of options to completely customize our nodes in our network. Um, and I would click confirm and it would begin spinning up a network, but I've already started one here. So I'm going to open this up just to show you. We can see in the details tab, sort of an overview of how our Hyperledger Fabric network is going. So you can see what we've done. We have an endorsement policy of a majority. So instead of all, we can see uh, the nodes are here in India. We can go through the tabs. We can see the participants. You can see who else is in there. We would need to, we can add organizations for Hyperledger Fabric. As you saw, the organization itself can have one or many peers. We can invite one. Um, we can see here under resources how much resources it's taking up. So we can see it's quite healthy at the moment. We're not uh, endangering our uh, servers or anything like that. Um, if we were, say, uh, getting to the limits of our resource, we can, of course, scale like we can anything else. We can see the logs and the deployment logs, uh, et cetera. But let's say we want to create another node. So we want at least a, a peer node and an order node as part of our organization. I would go here to blockchain nodes. And I would click here, add a blockchain node. Um, I would choose the network that I want. So it's for my Hyperledger fabric. I would give it a name, say node. And we would get to choose whether it wants to be an order or a peer. Um, let's say peer, since we already have an order. And then we would click our click through for our deployment plan. Um, I'll just make it the same as I've done it before. And then I would confirm and it would spin it up in just a few minutes. I have already spun these up here. So we can see both an order node and a peer node has already been deployed. So let's take a look um, behind the hood here to see what they have. And we can see all the information that we need about this node. We can see um, the keys that are associated with this node. This one is uh, the order node. We can see here it's the type. So it has specific things uh, for the order. You can see it's relation to consensus and its participation participation status. And just like everything else, we can see the resources, how much it's using. We can see the logs in case we need to do any troubleshooting, um, including deployment logs. So we have all that stuff um, that makes it easy. Uh, um, and then we can go to the peer node and we can see, again, just information related to this specific node that is running. Um, so we can see the type is a peer. Um, it's deployed in Mumbai under the Google Cloud. Um, and we can hear the peer node is what you connect with RPC. So this is how you would interact with the blockchain. This is the type of node that is making requests to the blockchain or to the distributed ledger uh, of the Hyperledger Fabric uh, network and channel that you are uh, creating. Um, so here you can connect, create for developers. We see our resources again and logs and deployment logs in case we need to um, do any troubleshooting. So there you go. It's that easy to begin working on or developing any application on Hyperledger Fabric. Of course, if we were to continue, 
um, you would of course create a smart contract set in order to uh, begin building your chain code. And that would be running on your uh, pure nodes. You can see we already have that there. Um, but so there you have it. It's really that easy. It's that quick to, to already begin uh, working and deploying applications on Hyperledger Fabric.